Creatine's been traditionally marketed towards the athletic community to help build lean muscle mass and increase strength. Now you can get creatine, 95% of the creatine found in your body is actually stored in your skeletal muscles and that's where it helps to regenerate a compound called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. It's also important for the aging process. There's a condition that we'll all experience as we age called sarcopenia and this is essentially a loss of lean muscle tissue and strength. Now this generally starts to occur around the age of 30 where we'll lose approximately 3-5% to 5 of our lean muscle tissue every single year and it can be even more for sedentary individuals. So not having adequate lean muscle and strength as you age uh, can negatively impact things like your posture, your mobility and your balance and this can leave you more susceptible to injury from things like falls. Several studies in older adults have shown that creatine supplementation when combined with a moderate strength training program not only improved uh, lean muscle mass and increased strength, but it also helped to improve their quality of life because they had more energy and they had better mobility to get around. It's also been shown in several studies to help to reduce or slow cognitive decline. And this often manifests itself uh, as memory loss, earlier called the mitochondria, begin to malfunction due to wear and tear. So these free radicals will attack the fatty membrane of your brain cells and essentially what they do is they oxidize the fats and they create these fatty pigments called lipofusion. The brain cells can't function properly and this is thought to be one of the main such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and Huntington's disease. So this is where creatine supplementation can come in because it can help to protect your brain cells from these oxidized fatty pigments and it can also help your brain cells degenerate the correct amount of energy in the mitochondria. It's also been shown to help reduce blood sugar and insulin levels by increasing the ability of your body's cells to use glucose for fuel. Now creatine can do this because it ramps up a protein found primarily in your skeletal muscles called glucose transporter 4 and this protein can help to clear glucose from your bloodstream and shuttle it into your muscle cells where it can be used for fuel and energy production. So if there's less circulating glucose in your bloodstream that means that your pancreas doesn't have to work as hard to produce insulin and bring those blood sugar levels down and this becomes the ideal metabolic scenario for building lean muscle and burning more body fat. Now when it comes to the safety of creatine, there have been hundreds of studies in humans demonstrating that it's non-toxic and safe even in dosages of up to 10 grams per day or if you're taking any medication that can be toxic to your kidneys but talk to your doctor. Now, as I mentioned earlier, creatine can be obtained through some animal foods like beef or fish uh, but in order to get the optimal daily dose of creatine you'd have to eat around a pound of beef per day so this is really just unrealistic for most people and can be quite expensive so this is where creatine supplementation can come in. So the recommended daily dose for creatine supplementation in active individuals is 3 to 5 grams per day. Some people will get an upset stomach from taking creatine supplementation. If that's the case with you, what you can try is stirring it into a, a warm beverage or warm liquid and make sure that you stir it until it's completely dissolved and then just drink it really slowly if you're a beginner to creatine supplementation. So basically what this is, is you just take 20 grams a day divided over 4 servings. So 5 4 gram servings over a day and you take that for a five to seven day period and what this is supposed to do is saturate your muscle tissues with creatine and then you just go to five grams per day after that. But studies have shown that if you just start off with the five grams per day over a 30 day period you pretty much get the same ergogenic benefit as doing the loading phase. You can save yourself some money by I recommend is creatine monohydrate. This is the form that's used in pretty much all of the human studies. If you see other forms out there in the marketplace they're really just marketing hype